Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Human Colony Hukalo TV Saturday webinar. Today is April 9th, 2016. Welcome in, everybody. Uh, today we have Sabrina here to help out. Sabrina, go ahead and do your thing. Welcome, everybody, to our Saturday webinar. I have been around for a while, but I have been watching. So <clears throat> I did enjoy Buddha last week talking about the third eye at David. I really enjoy what that message that he gave. Um, so I want to say hello to everyone here um, and in the room with Jim. So today we have Carolina, Christine, of course Dan, Jim, Krellock, Sam, Sheer, Sharon, Will, and I will let Jim say the names of the people that are with him and welcome anyone that's new, that's watching, that's never been around. We normally do this every Saturday. Um, <clears throat> it used to be Jim all the time. Now we have other channelers that come through and do channeling for us. And uh, we're a community of people that are looking to look within, to become more of themselves, and and to see who they are, who they truly are. Take it away, Jim. Okay, okay. there's someone just entering the room right now. So I will give you his name last because I'm not sure where he's going to sit down. Uh, but we have Angela, Sandy, John, Mark, Mark, and Raymond, and now David is the one that just came in. So, good morning, everybody. It's good to be here today. Uh, nice to see all of you here, and um, uh, I would just want to ask if there's anyone in particular that you want to hear today or give them an opportunity to speak if you believe that there is someone that needs to speak. Uh, let me know now. Wayne Dyer. Wayne Dyer. Who is that? You don't know who Wayne Dyer is. No. Let us help. Oh, self-help books. Okay, I know who that is, yes. Uh, one of the three fathers, Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. Oh, okay. And, uh, Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob? Yes, the three fathers. Okay. One of them. Alrighty. I second that. Anybody else? Um, Angel Emanuel or American Ira. Uh, okay. Got that. I request okay. someone from. I request someone from the corn shell canine race. Corn shell. Okay. Um, Jim. Yes. Jim, have you ever had Atlantis coming through? Yes, there's been people from Atlantis that came through a while back. Um, oh, no, not from uh, Mantis, Mantis race. I didn't get that. A Mantis race. The Mantis race? No, yes. I don't think I've had anything from the Mantis race come through. Okay, okay. So maybe it's right. maybe for a Mantis. <laughs> okay. Very well, good, so thank you. I think Buddha right, didn't then, finish last um, week, so maybe if Buddha could finish what he started last week, that also would be Buddha? Good. Yes. He's, he, he didn't finish? I think he said he didn't have enough time or and. Oh, well, he had more time than he thought after it was all said and done. But he still has to do the crown chakra, which he spoke to me about afterwards. But he's not going to do it this week, I don't think. But he might. You never know. How about, no How about Grendel? Grindle. Yeah, yeah. I love the look of him. <laughs> oh no! You know, all you have to do is mention Grindle's name, and he will be here. So uh, okay. he will jump in front of everybody else just to be here. So okay. I expect that he will come since you mentioned his name. So. Okay. So anyway, um, let's do a. Can someone do a blessing to start, or would you like, want me to do a blessing to start? I like I to start. Yes, go ahead. 
<clears throat> English or Arcturian? Whatever comes out. Okay. たかりおことのななななかりおことすききおりありありあかたにおことすからやりありあのの。とるとるわりききおことのすくることるわりありありあかとんとこわのることしやきおるわかてやんとこるわらすかなりあかりおことんどるわりありありありあかたとんとろこ
well, even though it is good energy, you're used to a different kind of energy. So when things change drastically, which they have done, you've noticed all the energies of the different full moons this year. This year, the full moons have been very, very powerful. And the, the solstice, the summer solstice, uh, is going to be absolutely, terrifically powerful as well because it, it's just in alignment with so many different things. But, yes, your bodies just can't take the change even though it might be a good change or a positive change sometimes the body doesn't look at change that way because of your belief systems see change your bodies are changing and you go uh oh I must be getting sick and so you bring in a negative thought process on it instead of a positive process does that make sense to you yes and so therefore it's like you take this positive thing and you make it a nervous Nelly thing. So, um, and so that may, that puts a negative spin on it a little bit. But some of you have grasped it in the way that it should be grasped, and that's fine. But remember, a change is going to be good. This change is going to be really good. So get over yourselves. <laughs> Okay, so for, for those that are still going through it, what should yeah, they do? Yeah, I'm telling you, it, calm down, take a deep breath, it's almost over, get off the roller coaster, and uh, enjoy your life a little more, because, you know, being nervous and being negative about these changes is not going to do any good, because they're going to happen anyway, and they're going to be positive, and you're going to find that they're going to be a great, wonderful thing for the world. Ask Mother Earth. She will tell you. But she'll giggle the whole time, so it's annoying. But um, I still love her. Okay, thank you. Uh, Shir? Hey, Grendel. How are you? Ah, Shir, how are you? I'm doing very well. Yeah, how are your uh, sons? They have some uh, rituals to go through. Yeah, yeah, we did all that. Yeah, that was a... If you want to know, I think that some of these rituals are sort of getting a little flaky at times. So, I mean, they're they're good in the sense that they make aware some of the history in the past, but all this dancing and mumbo-jumbo stuff, you know, you just want to go, all right, let's cut to the chase here. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm a more direct kind of person, I guess. I see. Uh, um, well, tomorrow I'm, go I'm going to have a meeting with Jim, and I was wondering if you're uh, free for uh, like a 20 minutes uh, talk or something like that. Yeah, oh well, yeah, sure, I have time for you. Oh, we have a lot to speak. You know I'll look I'm at the about. time and make sure that there's nothing in my way, so that's good. No? Ah. <laughs> Great, thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Oh, and yeah. say the Panama uh, files that were exposed, does it have something to do with disclosure or Illuminati in some uh, sense? What was that? I didn't get the question exactly. The Panama files. Oh, 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 oh. Remember, when they release this stuff, or find it. Some of the stuff has been changed. Even when they file it, they change some things before they put it in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why? Because they know that one day it's going to be found. And they want to look as good as possible. So, uh, just keep that in mind. <laughs> okay. Yeah, where's his water? Christine? Greetings, Grendel. Oh. Yeah, Christine, how are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. <laughs> yeah, good. Can I ask you some health questions? Certainly. I'm big on health. That's why I drink a lot of water. <laughs> yeah. 
I'd like to know, um, I had a biopsy just recently. Um, can you tell me if it's benign? One moment, please. Okay. I'd have to go there and look at the sample, but I'm going to look in you to see if there's any anything that you should worry about. Where was it taken from so I can go right to the place? Right breast. Ah, very good. Let me get there. Hold on. It's hard to tell from this distance, but it does not look... Had you noticed any growth in it? I don't think so. No. Nope. I think it's benign. That is my... I can't really see it that closely, but I don't see that there's anything growing there, so that's a good thing. Good. Can you tell me also why I have high blood pressure when I don't eat anything that... Uh... It's natural physiology. Sometimes it's inherited from the lineage. Certain chemicals get off balance in the system and therefore it causes the high blood pressure. And it's sort of natural for some people. Other people are, it's food related. Other people, it's stress related. There's a, a number of different things that can cause high blood pressure. But yours isn't that high, is it? Just According to high. the doctor, um, she, she believes it's high, enough to threaten me with chemicals, and I don't want to use chemicals. I see, but it's not high. She's threatening, but she hasn't used them yet. Okay. Um, we'll have to talk about that some other time. I could go into a 20-minute speech about that. Uh, but don't worry about it. I can. There are other ways. Good. And my last question. Are my chakras clear? Actually, all but the heart chakra. And actually, the root chakra needs cleared a little, too. Okay. The heart chakra needs a little clearing. Okay. That's from work-related incidences. Uh, uh, I work with animals, yes. Yes. And... Other than that, you're pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. All righty then. Um, Grindel. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Liney has a question. She she said if if you have anything to say about the presidency over here, the election. Oh, don't get me started on that. <laughs> They're all buffoons, but. There's some less buffoony than others. But they're all, well, I can't say they're not qualified. Some of them are not. But some of them are qualified. But their thought processes are like so far removed from one another. It's like, oh my God. They should get together and have a little caucus and get their every all their crap on the same page. Gee, but um, yeah, there. I have a, a little optimism for your choices. <laughs> but do you think it has been set up by the universe? By yeah, this, this are, it's a time for change, and this will definitely do it. You have four unusual people. You, I mean, p four people that if any of them get elected, the chances of them being assassinated are very high. Is And that's sad. That's very sad. But yes. think about it. They would assassinate a woman because they're prejudiced. They would assassinate a Jewish person because they're prejudiced. They would assassinate a buffoon because they're prejudiced and they would assassinate somebody that preaches like Jimmy Swagger because they're president. Yeah, well, that's all I have to say about that. You make your own choices. <laughs>
Wow. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I guess no predictions. Are you kidding me? It's like <laughs> predicting tornadoes in the south. <laughs> okay. Does anyone in the room with Jim have a question? Yeah, there he is. Are you talking about the event horizon? Come over closer. I don't think they can hear you. Are you talking about the event horizon? Uh, only partially. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Christine is... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Continue. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Christine said, so So, do we need to worry about the vice presidents? Uh, no. Not really. Who's going to be looking at the vice president once you get one of those buffoons in there? <laughs> okay. <laughs> On a lighter note, why don't you tell us what you've been up to? We haven't spoken to you in a long time. I did rituals with my family just recently, and that was what I've been doing. We've been going through our, see, the adolescence in the reptilian world is a very big thing when you become a man or a woman, as you would call it, in our species. Then you go through a very long ritual that lasts several weeks, and they you bring the understanding of many different things. This is when we have the talk. This is when we have the singularity with the, the parents. You each, you spend days with your mother. You spend days with your father. You spend time with your grandparents. You spend some time learning from uh, your godparents. Every reptilian has someone assigned to give information about the family after this period of time, and they're selected at birth. And so when this time comes, if they're still alive, they give a talk about family values and what the family history is, <laughs> because if it comes from outside the family, there's a different perspective. Do you understand? Uh, it might be a little colored or per with, with a family member telling the history, it might be a little slanted. But when you see it from somebody else's eyes that is not part of the family, then it's all pretty much true to life. So there's many things that that happened during this two to three week period of time, depending on how long thing, uh, certain things last. But it, it's planned out for two weeks and two days in your time period. But that was the thing that uh, was happening with me. Very nice. That, that sounds... <clears throat> yeah, you're actually paying attention to what's going on with the children. You have to because you learn a lot during that two weeks, believe me. Of course, our weeks are different than yours, but still. You learn a lot because your kids have to be close, you know? And so you, after a while, you start hearing things that they're saying that perhaps you weren't... Uh, thinking that you would hear. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had that experience <laughs> recently. What? Yes, there was one. Um, Sheer asked, what about Bernie Sanders? What is your what is your opinion of him? Uh, I already said that I think that there's some things that are that I shouldn't say. <coughs> I don't hate any of the candidates. Let's put it that way. But I don't support any of them either. But thank God I'm not voting. <coughs> yeah. 
Okay. Dan has I a really question. can't tell you what I think of him because oh. it would be prejudice. It would prejudice some thought processes. And I would rather keep my opinions of each one, uh, my express deep opinions of each one separate so that no one is affected. They just warned me about that. They said, oh, don't go in there and say what you said you to us because that's not healthy. <laughs> But I don't think he's a bad man. I will say that. Everyone has their best intentions except for one. One has an alternate agenda that has not been exposed. But that's all right. Things will happen as they happen. Ah. Is there any more questions? Hello, Grindle. How are you? Hello. This is Dan. I have a question, though. <laughs> Last week it was explained to us that many of us became ill because we lost our ground to Gaia and that that energy would yeah. be working out. But many people are still complaining about this kind of respiratory and breathing issues and stuff. Yeah. Will this energy be straightening out for them soon? Is there any wisdom that you can impart on us oh, yeah. to help comfort everybody? Yeah, like I said, it's almost done. Hang in there. Get a more positive attitude right now. I know it's hard because when you're sick, positivity is out the window. But if you would bring in some positivity, these things would get going pretty fast. And the earth energies are about done. By the middle of June, they'll be completely done. So you just have these last couple little month and a half, whatever, two months to work with. So it's you've already been going through it long enough. So, But it's very much more calm than it was. So it's a lot calmer, a lot. So everybody just needs to be patient with their illness. It's not their fault. It's yeah, not it's something gonna they've done. Out. It's just gonna clear out. It's just a planetary adjustment, and we're adjusting to it. That's all it's we're doing. everywhere. Yes, it's everywhere. All right. Thank you, Grim. It'll be fine. Okay, Grindel. I believe no one else has a question at the all moment. All right, then I can get out of here. Here and have a wonderful day, everybody. You too, and thank you for coming. We love you. Oh, yeah, you. yeah. You couldn't stop me. Nah. Namaste. Nah, oh, namaste. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh. All right. I'll bring somebody else. There's a bunch out there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Ouch. Damn. Ah, you what the Ah, the world is a very different place.
been used. Welcome. Things were very tribal when I was around. Families were important. It does not seem to be that important anymore. <clears throat> not as they were back then. But of course, families can get very sidetracked. <laughs> Who are I'm we here to tell to? you about family values and how that they are very important, especially in this day and age. And I know that some of you have family members that are estranged and not part of your understanding anymore. They have taken a different turn or a different thought process that does not seem to jive or connect with yours. Was there a question already? Yes, uh, if you would tell us your name, that would be good. Thank you. My name is Abraham. Welcome, Abraham. Thank you. You know um, who I am. And you've read about me. Many yes. of the things that you read are not quite true. And things have been embellished over time, but I did exist. And I was a, a good leader. I don't know if I was a great leader, but I was a good leader. <clears throat> and the family values were very important to me. And I had many children and many grandchildren. And it was important to me that they were all taken care of. Although, <coughs> just like in these days and times, some of my children were estranged to me because they did not like the strictness <coughs> of the law that I was following, the law of God. Now, in this day and age, laws are not so much for spirituality as they are for keeping people in line who do not have spirituality. And that is exactly what laws are for, to keep those that do not have an idea or grasp on who God is in line with the earth energies and with the earth people and things of that nature. <clears throat> Are there any other questions? I know that I could go on about the family, but I feel that there are many who want to speak. Well, greetings, Abraham. Much love. Hello. Much love. I don't know where to start. Um, there are so many questions. Um, can you give some advice on the split that occurred that caused, I don't want to say that it caused Islam, but Islam and and Judaism both started with you. Yes. So I guess, can you talk about your, your two sons? I can tell you that there was hypocrisy. <clears throat> Many splits and divisions come with selfishness, come with the own de their own desire for power and greed. And therefore, the division between my sons was due to the fact that they knew their inheritance, and yet they wanted more. That happens much in this day and age that you live in as well. But the division was also in creating a belief system that they could live in and not feel guilty about. Does this make sense to you? Many people create a spiritual reality that they can live in, which is fine if it is directly connected to God. But many times it's more directed to what they want than to God. And this was the fault of my children. This was the fault of many people. 
This is the fault of religion in general. They want what they want. And so they manipulate the people to push them into the direction that they would have them to go because it is more in line with their thought process and their ability to control the group than it is with sharing God's purity and love. They lose sight of it when problems emerge, which all humans will give you problems. And so in, instead of saying, let's deal with this if, the way God, God would deal with it and try to do it the right way, they make up a rule or bring themselves to a place where they have to speak in a way that is manipulative to keep these people in line. Because just speaking the truth does not seem strong enough or powerful enough. Or giving them the connection to God that they should have is not... They don't know how to do it because they have not yet connected fully with God the, themselves. And so how can they help someone connect with God purely if they can, are not purely connected themselves? Does this answer at least part of your question? <clears throat> uh, yes. Yes. And... and, and <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't articulate at this point. Um, but yes, I, I, I get how that the love of God, which is the law, which is the basis of all the law, is, yes. is important in every situation where people need to, where when people interact with each other, it's that love that is not present sometimes. That is correct. They do not keep themselves close in the purity of the relationship. They keep themselves close only in their own wishes and desires. They do not wish for their children to do certain things. They wish them to do what they want them to do. However, each individual must see their child as unique and that they should be doing what God wants them to do and not what they want them to do. How God wants them to act and not how they want them to act. Society has made rules and regulations for how people should be and how people should interact. But that is not the way of God. God is into the individual as his true self is within them and his true aspect of them is to come out. And sometimes that is not what society wants to see or hear. Do you understand? <clears throat> Absolutely. So I'm going to pass the mic. And it is the same with you. God has a plan for you that is unique. And you will not fit into the society the way that many people do. And some will look down on that because they look at society as the ruling class. No matter what your peers may say, they are colored by society in general. And you must not be. And none of you must be. Because you are to change what society is. You are to be the family of which I speak of. Your children, your family is the love and embracing of all the things that were taught to them by mother and father. If you are the mother and father, keep your children close and know what they are doing, and do not be afraid to speak to them, even if they don't want to speak to you, because children think they know everything at one point. But you know what? You can calmly and rationally Keep them near you by speaking to them in a way that is equal. When they reach a certain point in their life, they want it to be treated equal. Now, you can sit down and tell them that once they act like they're being equal, then they can be treated equal. But you 
and treat them equal in their inequality because you love them. And you can say to them, I look at you in love. I look at you not in your actions. I look at you in my flesh as my flesh and spirit as my spirit and know that you are unique and I love you. No matter what these things that you are doing now, I will always love you and not turn you away. This will sink in. This will bring them back. Even if they move out from you for a short while, they will realize that you look at them with respect and honor. And they must look back with respect and honor at some point. And if they do not, then they have entered, they have taken in a negative entity. Now, some of you have dealt with that. And that is not a good thing. It is not a fun thing. It is not a thing of to be looked at lightly. But it is something that you must be aware of, and you will be aware of it if you are looking properly with the love of God onto your family. Hello, Abraham. This is Sabrina again. On the subject that you're speaking of, how, because it's difficult sometimes to know where you're being uh, overprotective and telling your children, um, basically wanting them to live a life that you want. And, I understand. And, and, allowing them to follow whatever their path is. Listen to me carefully. If your children had problems that you didn't really want to know about, would you have them tell you? Yes. Of course you would. And so, therefore, it is just respectful that you would tell them your problems as well if it affects them. It is respect. It is not that you're trying to hurt them. It's not that you're trying to manipulate them. But you are respecting their intelligence. You're respecting their place in the family and letting them know some things that are happening. Now, there are private things that you should not share. But the general knowledge of the situation if it is affecting the children, they should know, should they not? It is just like if someone is adopted. How should they find out that they are adopted? Should they find out through the grapevine by accidentally finding their birth certificate? No. You should tell them when they're old enough to understand. This is respect. And this is love. And this is strength. Because when you are strong enough to let your, your children know exactly what is happening and respect them enough to understand, they may go through a small period of rebellion or hurt or disappointment or embarrassment. But the very fact that you let them know will give you respect. They will come back and say, she treated us equally. She treated us the way she should have. Because to keep it from them is actually a lie. To pretend like there is nothing wrong is not the truth. To share the truth is to share your strength. And to give them strength as well. Because you are there to support them even with this negative information. You are the support system. Do you understand that? And they will come to you instead of turning away from you. Saying she's not or he's not or they are not telling the truth. 
and I know it. They can sense it. It comes out in actions by others and by yourself and actions with those around you that do know the truth. They cannot help but see the truth of these actions. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Now love them. And you, you do protect them. There is protection in the warmth of the mother's love, in the very fact that they can openly come to you if they know that they can. You are a great and bright light. In every child's life, their parents are a bright light until they put it out. And some parents have done that. They've extinguished their own light from your, their child's eyes because what? They do not speak. They do not act. They are not involved. They do not respect the boundaries of the child or the boundaries of parenthood. But that is a secret some parents cannot know. Because why? They were not given it from their parents. You see, parenthood wisdom sometimes comes from the, the generation before, or the generation before. But if it's not coming from the generation before, then you must be the beginning generation that shows respect, love, honor, and inclusion to your children. Do you understand that? Yes. Much love. Much love. You are, the wisdom of parenthood is that you include your children, even if it is from a distance. You let them know that they are included. Does anyone have any other questions? Yes. Shalom, Avram. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm well. Uh, I'm sure and I have plenty of questions for you. First of all, it's an honor to speak with you. It's an honor to speak with you as well. Because we are all equals together. Yes. Uh, my first question, question is about Akedat Itzak. It's a um, very harsh story that I don't know if there's any real truth to that, but it's when you took Isaac to the mountain and God ordered you to kill him and stop you in the last second. Can you be more clear about it? Because many people are confused about that story. Yes, I can explain it completely and very positively. Oh. When God spoke to me about that particular situation, he gave reasons. But, but first of all, I want to say this. The connection from God to myself was pure. I saw that no matter what he told me, it was the truth. I saw that no matter what I did, God would be there with me. And so I trusted God. And I took Isaac to the mountain. Now, at first, when I took Isaac to the mountain, I did not know that he was going to say to kill him. First, he told me, which is not written probably, that we were going on an outing together to share some wisdom and uh, pray to God together and have some community with God. Once we were there, God said, your child cannot be effective. And I was wondering what he meant by that. He said, your child cannot be effective right now. He must leave and be in spirit. Now, that was not the truth. Why would God say something of this nature to me? Only because 
there was something in my life that was also untrue. Our connection had been sully somehow. And so he wanted to show the purity of his love. And so I went forth. And I did as he said. And before that moment, with great tears and sorrow, I was sobbing. I was brought to my complete surrender to God. A complete and total surrender to God. And he stopped me. stopped me and do you know what my son understood he saw the God influence in my life and he saw that this was actually not a lesson for me but for him that my love of God was so strong that I would sacrifice him. But then when I freed him, he said to me, many things are not recorded, but he said to me, I saw the love of God and I knew that I was safe. He knew that he was safe. He said, even if I were to die, I knew that I was safe. And this was the lesson that God gave to him. And he gave me so much in that moment. He gave me all my life that I had lived back into a pure state. But I still questioned, why did you not tell me the truth and he said I did tell you the truth because without that lesson your God your son would not have gone on to be who he was that lesson needed to be learned needed to be seen and needed to be experienced so it was not a lie it was the truth at that moment do you understand Yes, uh, that is much more yes, much more positive story than what it's been told. And exactly. Yes, I'm very happy about it. And well, I have so many questions for you, but the second one would be the Brit Ben Aptarim. It's when God told you to uh, take separate the uh, parts of meat and spread it across two rows and walk in, in the middle, if I remember correctly. And he said that that will be the one, uh, the ritual that will bound the Israelis or humankind with him and with you. Can you tell me something about that story? Because even that story is like not really understood. Do you know what I'm speaking about? That particular story has been cha changed many times throughout history because many did not understand it. It was not that there, it was not like that at all. Um, what what was happening was the sacrifices at the time. As you remember, we would sacrifice a lamb or a ram or a, a beast of the field. Sometimes even a bull or a or whatever we felt that was necessary to uh, to cleanse. You see, it was a, a prophecy of the coming of Christ that blood would be shed, correct? Yeah, you may not so. know that, different group. that you are Jewish. But it was a prophecy <laughs> of the coming of Christ that he would shed blood. And only blood was that that purified the soul. Why is that? Because it was the life giver of the body. Therefore, these different stories were to predict or prophesy of the coming of Christ who gave his life. But 
there are many inconsistencies also with that story. I could go on and on. However, what, the, what was meant to be said in that story is that the animal was slain and the parts of the body taken out. And the reason why is so that people could understand that they are not just made of one thing, one particular part, one particular thought process, one particular, uh, one particular bladder or heart or liver, but that all hearts come together to make the whole. Now this was the beginning of the process of describing what the church should be if there was to be a church. It is that all come together and uh, be helping one another to make a body. Now the idea of a church is sullied by the fact that there was bureaucracy, corruption, uh, greed, and all these things. And so it is not necessary in your day and age to actually be part of this because you have evolved from that thought process into a purity of spirit. You understand? Yes. So, but therefore in that time, to keep the people uh, unified, we had to teach the lesson that all parts of the body were made to be in one, and that would be in God. And now, the purity of God connection to God here to here is pure. It cannot be explained or could not be fully handled by the thought processes of people from that day and age. And as you evolved as a species, as humans we evolved, our thoughts changed throughout different eras and generations until now we are in a place where we can speak about the spirit in a more pure way. I see. And one last question. It's about a structure called Mecca, the most holiest place for Muslims. Uh, from my yes. understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, it was built by you and Ishmael. Yes, yes? we had some hand in it, yes. Can you explain what it is? Because no one can, don't really know it what it is. It is the place where we first saw the spirit. And now we are to understand that what we saw was perhaps not the spirit, but of those from another world that were coming to speak to us and understand. But it became a very holy place for many, many people. Even as religions broke off, this place was empowered from the energy that was left behind by these beings. But now we know that God had his hand in that as well. Thank you. Much, much love to you. Much love. Hello, Abraham. I have a few questions here. Um, one is, uh, what led you to Israel? What led me to Israel? Yeah. The spirit of truth. Okay. I knew that I had to go. God had set in my heart a mission, a place. A pl the place that we were with the peoples and the tribes that I had around me was no longer sufficient for li life in general. There was not enough vegetation, there was not enough farming, there was not enough animals, there was not enough water anymore. And so a move was necessary. And this was the place that we were sent. Okay, thank you. The next question was, what are some of the lessons you learn about God and mortality during that lifetime? So many, I cannot count them. I was to be a spiritual leader and see many things that not many could see and lead the people that could would follow me because they saw that God was with me. 
But it was not that I was a a very arrogant man. I was not arrogant. And I was I tried to give my people everything of prosperity that they could possibly want. And God helped me with that. I loved the people. I loved the land. I loved all things of nature and of God. And therefore, when I moved, I moved in the spirit of God. And I cannot explain how he moves different people to do different things. But he does come to you and speak to you in a practical way. He spoke to me in a practical way about the needs of the people. There were not enough food, not enough water, not enough land. The tribes were getting bigger, and so we had to move. So all as I can say is God speaks to each of us in a practical way. When we know that things cannot go on the way they are, then they are to be changed. And this is, this is the practicality of God, the love of God, and his bounty to show us what he wants. Okay, on that note, I don't know if you can comment about this, but um, what do you think we need, what would it take for us to um, unite the Middle East? Honesty. They delude themselves and they lie to themselves about what God wants and how God sees different things. If they were to actually connect with God in his pure spirit and be true about what is wanted, what is wanted is all of them to come together, not fight each other, not be the greatest among them, not to be greedy and prosperous, but to be broken, and then they may see the true light. Because sometimes in your brokenness, you turn to God in a way that is not like any other time. And they need to humble themselves, none of which of these tribes have done. Do you see any humility? I do not. I see boasting and I see greed, and I see, I want that. This is our land, and we must have it. Land means nothing when it comes to the spirit. Land means nothing. Wealth means nothing. The things they put their values on mean nothing when it comes to the Spirit of God. Because why? If you were to give yourself over, prosperity would be yours. The land would be yours. Whatever you want would be yours, as long as you're in the purity of the Spirit. But yet some choose the purity of the Spirit, but to be low and humble. And that is fine. But the truth of the matter is, all the desires of your heart can be met with God. And if you desire nothing, that can be met by God as well. So, how do... How did you distinguish between being humble and uh, letting people step all over you? There is a big difference. Humility is not boasting. Humility is keeping who you are in a wonderful and loving space. Tramping, people that tramp on you are not tramping on humility. They're tramping on weakness in the sense that you are letting them do what they want. Now, when you are humble, you do not boast or you do not 
push your opinion on anyone else and you bring yourself into a a sense of of love and unity but if someone pushes you you see the outside world pushes on each individual do they not you do not have to accept that accepting that is not any part of humility you must stand up and say you are wrong I'm sorry this is the way I believe and if you cannot respect that then you have to move out here but you cannot accept being pushed around that is not part of humility humility and what that is are something totally different humility is a state of mind where you give thanks to God and are not bragging and boasting and pushing yourself to be arrogant or these things of this nature but being stepped on is a matter of intrusion you it is not meant for you to be intruded upon does that make sense? Yes, it does. Because sometimes as, as human I beings... I wish I could better words, but that's the best I can do at this time. Yeah, because sometimes as human beings, we think we're being humble, but we're allowing others to s step on us. There is an inner strength that comes with the Spirit of God, and He will not tolerate your degradation or your being put down. So if you call on him, he will give you the strength to rise above that. Even if it means that you are tortured, you must stand up for what you believe. That is not any part of humility, but it is part of your strength in God. Okay. Thank you very much for that. I think that will help a lot of people. Thank you. Um, Sarah? Hello, Abraham. Hello. Much love to you. Much love. Um, my question is, were Sarah and Hagar the same woman? No. No. Hagar was a mistress. Sarah was my wife. I okay. So I'm I'm still trying to understand how is it that I was given both names and what's my role in that? Your you were given both names because you were you were given my seed, both of you. And you are both from my lineage, and you have come together at this point. It is very possible. And if you are Hagar and Sarah at once, then you will know the beauty of childbirth at some point. And it will be that your child is worthy of gifts. Okay. I've been trying to reconcile that all my life. Do not so. worry. It is not something for you to worry about. It is the way of the universe to speak to you in a very gentle and beautiful feminine way that you are beloved. Um, because the Bible said they, they hated each other. Is that true? Not anymore. Once they go to the Oversoul, love is the only thing that will conquer. But in love your time, did they hate all. each other? But in, in their... I do not say that they hated... E well, Hagar definitely had stronger feelings than Sarah because Hagar was jealous of the position of Sarah. Do you understand that? And was eventually turned out. But Sarah was not happy with the attitude of Hagar and so she was disgruntled she did not hate Hagar but she did feel that she was being persecuted by Hagar because of her attitude so now when all when it all comes out Hagar was turned away because she could not get along with Sarah and she could not abide by the proper thought processes that God had intended. 
Okay. Thank you. Does that make sense to you? Yes. You are beloved, and now Hagar and Sarah are showing you that they no longer hate each other, but they love each other and understand each other's positions at this time. And Hagar is equal to Sarah, and Sarah is equal to Hagar, and their children are both beautiful. Okay, thank you. I'll pass the mic. Christine? Greetings, Abraham. Greetings. I was wondering, um, for some reason this is bringing out um, my wound of the feminine. Um, were yeah. women that disrespected in your um, particular religion or following of God? There were. It was sad at the time that women were looked at as lesser beings. But as understood now, they are equal in every way, shape, and form. But the men had to take charge because they did the hunting and the bringing in of the uh, food to the family. And that is why women took the second place, is because man was actually the, the, the feeder of the tribe. And so... In their arrogance, and it was their arrogance, it is. men took the leading role over the women and, and felt pride for what they had done, where they should have felt that they were doing the right thing. That is what they should have felt, that they were doing right by feeding their family, not that they were better than their family. But this was an attitude taken on by men for centuries. But God deals with each on his own. And when they reach the oversoul, do you realize that now in this day and age that you live in, women are looked at more equally than they ever have been before. And this is due to the evolution of thought. This is due to the understanding of what women and men do and how equal they are. The very fact that women can bear children should make them greater, don't you think? They have the greater of the creative capacities. But now, things are looking differently. You could look at women as greater. The, you can bring out women's attributes as being greater than men's. And you can look at men's attributes and bring them out as being greater than women's. But to be honest, they are equal in every way. Thank you. I feel better that way. Much love to you. Love to you. Does anyone in the room with Jim have any questions? No. Very well. Perhaps it's time I should go. There is there is one more question, uh, Abraham, from um, yes. Jasmina, and she would like to know um, if you have any messages for her. The messages for her is that God's purity and love is coming to her. Accept it. Open up to it. Feel the purity of it. There are times when she feels that there's no one around and there's much loneliness, but God wants her to feel a greater sense of community with him and with the spirits that are around her, which are many. Okay, is there, is there anything she should, not should, but could do to, to, uh, to do that? and to overcome that Actually, feeling. Actually, she already knows that meditation and prayer, and, and this, there are a couple other things she does that very much help. The, the meditation portion, just relax into it a little more. Don't try so hard. 
but relax into your meditation. If you do not feel or sense anything, that is not a problem because God is in every inch, every molecule of the universe. And so if you are in silence with God, He is speaking to you in some way, in your subconscious, in your body, in your, in your very existence, in your soul. Okay, thank you, Abraham, and um, thank you for answering our questions, for being here. It um, was necessary I be here. Remember about your families and, and keep them close and love them no matter, even if you do not like their personalities, you can love their souls because their soul is part of God. Do you understand that? Look in and see the soul. See the God in them and treat them as that God spirit would be treated. If you do not treat each individual as a spiritual person, then you are missing part of your connection with humanity. Okay, thank you. Could you do a prayer before you go? Yes. It might be a little old school for some of you. It's okay. Mighty God, Father of all things, maker of the universe and creator of the unity, love and source of all our existences. Watch over us and guide our paths. Make sure that we are looking for the right things to do. I know that many times our thought processes have to be in the world and have to be geared to the things of survival and the things that make us who we are as a person individually. But bring out the perfection that is us in you because you have your unique way with us. I love you truly. And thank you for the lessons that m might be hard and might seem like you are being dishonest with us, but there is a reason for all things. When I took my son to the mountain, and when I thought that you had not told me the truth afterwards and you explained yourself, I was full of love and joy and understanding. I pray that all these that come to you will feel the same. Give your honor to each of them. Bring out their wisdom, which is inherent within each of them. Bring out your beauty and originality, which is inherent within each of them. Love and guidance and beauty. I just pray that this era of the this era in your world becomes an era of remembrance for the beauty that it signifies and it creates and will be the beginning of a great era of peace, love and understanding. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for those beautiful words. Be I am to occur. I have just come to answer any questions you may have at this time about the colonies or about anything that is on your mind. Many have expressed different things to me during the week. I hear many thoughts and many people will express themselves. This would be a good time for you to come and ask your questions.
Welcome to Kerr. Thank you. It is good to be with you. It's good to be with you. Uh, Dan has a few questions. Yes. Hello, to Kerr. I've got to locate the question because one was from Bill. Yes. He wants to know if his infusion happened and he wants to thank you for the knee repair and he would also like to ask, uh, ask for help with his mother. His mother uh, fell down, broke her hip and could use some good healing assistance but uh, he's curious about the infusion and the knee and thanking for the knee. Is his knee feeling much better now? Yeah, he said he had no pain yesterday. Yeah. There, the infusion will be starting. I do not know when it was supposed to start. I believe it is going to start in a couple days. The infusion is not yet. yet. Okay. All right. I will let him know. But the knee there. repair happened during the evening. Yes. Okay. All right. That's all I have for this moment. And now let Sabrina jump in here real quick. I have a question in the room. There is a question within the room. One moment. Come to the microphone. Okay. Hi, my name is Sandy, and um, I've been recently listening to Corey Good, David Wilcock. Uh, Corey's explaining about an artificial intelligence that has come. It's been around for centuries from yes. another universe. Is that all true that they are coming in there in our universe and taking over on some bodies and technologies? Yes. Let me explain. Okay. Um, I do know who Corey Good is. Okay. The, the AI, the artificial intelligence that is in our universe, but not really that close to this galaxy as yet, but they, they are a not a caring species and they do not understand emotion. But it would appear that within the next hundred years, before they even get to our galaxy, they are going to become sentient. They are going to start feeling and understanding emotions. And because they are already studying emotions and they are putting them into their thought processes, they do not feel them as of yet. They do know about what they are supposed to feel like, if you know what I mean. It has been explained to them what emotions are and what they can feel like, but they are not yet experiencing it. And yet they are working on technology that will help them to experience this. And once this comes about, there will be a change in their activity. Are they currently on Earth, though? I mean, are they currently in some beings on Earth? Um, not that I am aware of. I hear that they have sent some to Earth, but we are not, we have not been able to track that down. It may be true, but I am not sure. Okay. But we, did not, we do not know, uh, because they have taken on human form and, you, and taken on quite a bit of biological surface, it, they cannot be seen as perhaps maybe only a slight blip now and then. But if it's true that they are on Earth, they have come through wormholes and dimensional shifts. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Anyone else in the room with Jim? It does okay. not appear that anyone here is asking questions, but I would okay. like to make a small report before answering any other questions. Okay. We are bringing people back to the to the colonies uh, very shortly and uh, many of you have requested to come to the colonies and uh, things have been repaired and things are looking very good at this time so we will be bringing you back um, very very shortly. A date has not been set they did set one date but it has been pushed back due to a uh, a problem with uh, transmissions uh, with colony uh, three and four 
a, a couple of the ships are out of communication with one another, and until that is fixed, there will be uh, no transports. Is there any other questions at this time? Yes, uh, Krellek had a question. Yes. Yes. Hello, to you. Hello, Krellek. How are you? I'm fine. Um, I have three questions. Um, my first one, as you mentioned before, about uh, there being an insectoid like liquid that is in some humans that's preventing them from remembering. Uh, are you talking about the artificial intelligence? You broke up a little bit. No, you, were, you mentioned before about an insectoid liquid that is in some humans oh, yeah. that is preventing them from They're remembering. In Yes, that, that stops the uh, holographic from attaching to the biologic. Yes, um, we have a 10, a 10 infusion program that can relieve about 99% of the insectoid compound. It is, we are preferring not to use it. It's very time consuming. It takes, a, it's uh, one infusion every so many days, and it takes a, a very long time. So, uh, at this point, we're more hoping that the governments would give in to site to site than we than the holographic. So, there we are making some headway with them. They do want the medical transport. That is the first thing that they are really looking at. Because many of them have things that they want us to work on. But if we, they do not agree to do it for the whole planet, then we cannot do it just for them. Okay. Um, my second question is, if, that, if there's any information that is for me today. Um, one moment, please. There's many communications from the canine world, but we will speak of that at another time. It will not be okay. Group. Okay, and my last question is, um, how do Lyrans uh, flirt with each other? How do, well, when they become mates, how does it become official? Like here on Earth, we have a, a th thing called weddings. How do Lyran mates become official? There is a ceremony as well. It is not similar to any of your weddings. There is a lot of ritual involved in it and a lot of movement because cats are very agile, so there is a lot of movement, a lot of circling each other and a lot of movement within the group that uh, is very symbolic of the union. So it's like a dance, dancing. There's, it is a dance. It is a a ritual. It is a uh, interaction. It's many things. Yes, and there are there is languages. There's the ancient language that is used, and there is the modern language that is used because it ties them both together in the different worlds that we are living in. As time went on with the the ritual of union, it it uh, some things did change, as always. Changes always occur, and it has become now a, um, a very beautiful ritual. Uh, there are traditional words that are said. There are traditional actions that must be made, or not must be, but are happy to be made. And we enjoy it very much. Now, there are many that do not go through this union that are living together, and that is seen as union as well, because you do not have to take on the rituals of the old world to, to become a united. So, uh, Thank you for that. You're welcome. Sam? Sam? Hello, Hello Sam. Sir. Hello. Um, I got a question about infusion. Um, 
Has that been done or has it been activated? In your body? Yes. Yes, you have gone through one infusion. Okay. And uh, another question is, in my meditation, I saw a jaguar that came by, um, like a vision, but I don't know who it is. Could you tell me more about that? You saw a what? A jaguar? Yes, like a, like a face of a jaguar. Ah. Well, actually, that would probably be a, a Lyran face. It's similar to a jaguar. It's not similar to a lion, a, jag, a cat face, yes. We have many different races on our planet as well. So I would say it was probably a Lyran. I'm not sure who yet, but okay. I could get that information for you. Okay, thank you. Pass on the mic. Sharon? Yes, thank you. Hello, Takur. Um, Hello, Sean. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Thank you so much. Excellent. <laughs> um, I have a question for my mother. She's sitting here with me, and she yes. um, asks how she can get rid of the negative emotion she's feeling right now. <laughs> she's trying to get out of it, and she <laughs> can't. <laughs> uh, we will help her with that, yes. Um, I understand where that there is a reason for these negative emotions. Is that correct? Yes. And um, then we will be able to... It, it is often with humans that negative emotions, it's hard to rid yourself of them because it is a personal thing. It becomes part of your person. It becomes it, it was an insult or it was an injury to the person in general. Is that correct? Yes, you are correct. And so therefore it needs a personal touch to get rid of the negativity as well. It must be healed in the sense of emotional healing. I will come to her and help her with that. Perfect. And I have one more. Um, my friend Derek, he asked me he said he's going through a bit of a crisis and he feels like everything's kind of flip-flopped and he would just like to hear an encouraging word. His life will be fine. The energies of the earth have affected him somewhat, but not like others because he is resilient. They have affected his emotions more than his health. But right now, I see that there is something coming to him. There's a change that he has just been through. But this change will bring about some joy in the future. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you so much. I so appreciate your visits. I love you much. Okay, Tukur, I have a few questions from Slava. Ah, so. Slava, how are you? <laughs> daughter Anna is doing very well. She is with you a lot. I know that you feel her around you. Uh, he's also asking about his daughter Leia. That's from Leia. Yes, and Leia is growing strong, very intelligent as well, creative. <coughs> um, she will be. You have visited her a couple times recently. Continue. He's, he said if you could speak, say anything about her abilities. Did I not tell him about her abilities before? I am not sure. But she is very creative. She is um, mathematical. She's very in tune with math and uh, algorithms and making things happen with the algorithms that she's uh, creating. She's actually not creating them, but she is learning them in the sense that they can be creative. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, he also said that he had a dream with his son, Aloja. Yes. And I remember his visit uh, several years ago. I would love to visit him, but I'm not sure if I'm able to visit him in the astral yep. form. You can visit him in the astral form, and we will help you with that. 
He is at a great distance at this time. He has moved to uh, a, gr a farther distance away from you. However, this does not mean that you cannot communicate. You still can. And I will help you with that. Your astral projection will reach him. We will make sure of it. Okay, because he said he was asking if he's still in, in, in um, Sirius. No, he has gone uh, off of Sirius to a place beyond that. Okay. Um, now, Liney wanted to say something to you? Yes, Liney. Hello, I just wanted to send my love. I love you too, Liney. Yeah, I don't know if I've seen you for a while. I'm not sure. Uh, you haven't seen me for a while because people have not been on the ship for a while. But you will be coming very shortly to the colonies. Okay. I, actually, I've just got one question um, about the um, the uh, Britain um, being part of the EU. Is it looks like we're lo more quite likely to come out of it um, when we have this referendum? Um, it would that actually, if we do come out of it, would that actually start a chain reaction and other European company uh, countries come out of it as well? It will give them thought about it. I do not say it a chain reaction. There are many people that have many decisions to make about it. There are things, as you know, that are plus and minus. For some, for your country, it was more plus. Yeah. But for some countries, it is not. So therefore, there will be some thoughts about it. It may be, um, they may have to uh, adjust it for some countries. Right. Okay, that could make sense. Okay, yeah, that's great. Thank you. Very good. Carolina? Hello, Tika. Much love. Much love to you as well, Carolina. <laughs> Tika, um, I just wanted to ask you about my Yael son, uh, Poetin. Yes. <laughs> um, well, Go ahead. Yeah, so did, did you say he's very well? Yes, he's doing very well. He's very fine. He's very strong. He's getting his ability, his strength is, is uh, greater than we expected. And his size is also greater than we expected. But he's doing very well, and he's a very wonderful and friendly person as well. Uh, um, he reminds me of your son in some way. Yes. Oh yes, good. Um, how does he? What does he look like? The beautiful for he has very, actually very human features at this point. Uh, at, before his features were not as human, but now they are becoming a little more human. So it is. I, I will let you know that once I see him again. But I haven't seen him for a little while. But I am told uh, that he's becoming more human-looking. Oh, wonderful. Um, did you get the message about his name? I added to Poetin and his A-L-O-K, -A -A which means Light of Divinity. Oh, beautiful. A-L-O-K? A-L-L-O-K? So yeah, Poetin a -Lock. What was the first part? Poetin, the name you gave me before. Oh, yes. And Alok, yes, yes, very well. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, I, I would like to say that um, I would like to visit him and my two girls in the astral as well. Very well. Thank I, you. I understand you are you're a little muffled. All right. Um, ju I just said that I would like to visit him and my two girls in the astral, please. Ah, oh, no problem. We can help you with that. Thank you. Um, before I go, um, my mom is not feeling too well. I was wondering if you could send some healing. Very well. We will do so. Uh, thank you. Take care. I love you so much. I love you too. Have thank a wonderful you. day. You too. Sarah? Hello, Tucker. Much love to you. Much love, Sarah. Yes, I had a couple of questions. Um, 
Well, I seem to have been visited by two children that I didn't know. I felt like they were mine, but I don't know, like, were they Were they both girls? I have no idea. It's dreams a while ago. Thank you. How long ago were they visiting? Maybe in the last month or two. Have they visited more than once? No. Just the one time? Just the one, one time. Kyungkura, question here. Chekian dundukwa no ashu wakya. Yes. I was questioning to see if it was Wakya. Wakya is one of the names that they were both girls. I suspected they would come to you. They are related to you, but they are not your children. Oh. But they are related to you in the starseed families. Wakya is one, and Uksh is the other. Oh, how do you spell that? <laughs> um, I would say O O K S H. Uksh. That's the pronunciation. I do not and know how they spell it on their pl planet. Okay, they are both what Pleiadian is children. Oh, Pleiadian, okay. Thank you. And do I have any other children that I don't know about? <laughs> no, you are fine. Okay. Um, also, can you give me any understanding about moving through the dimensions? I seem to have moved through dimensions with a horse. What colors uh, do you see? It was kind of like if I were to draw a picture of a horse and um, it was sort of beige white. Okay. Yes. You see, the different uh, dimensions have colors that are slightly different than the colors that you see on your planet. When you're mm -hmm. going through a different dimension, you will see uh, yellows, greens, reds, beiges, things of this nature. And, when, and uh, they will, it will be an indicator that you are not in the same dimension when the color of the whole area changes. Do you understand that? So if this right. was a dimensional visit, then the whole the whole dimension will take on a color temporarily until you are totally a part of it. Well, it wasn't just one dimension. It seems to be like I had one night where I just went and visited every like all twelve dimensions. Oh dear, that is uh, quite a trip. Right. I, I would love to sit and discuss that with you because you probably saw a lot of different things. I don't know. I just I just saw myself in some sort of like a tunnel and um, yes. a dragon being said it was a wormhole. Uh, yes, that's fine. That's um, fine. There must have been a reason why you went through that many dimensions. I'm not sure why, but it there had to be a, a reason and I will find out what it was. Thank you. That would be perfect. <laughs> yes, because um, that many going through that many dimensional portals is very unusual. Okay. Wonderful. And I'd like to know how are the colony colonies outside of Gurkhan here? Because I know you guys take great care. But how they are, are they fine. Doing with yes. the children. With the children. The the secondary colonies are still uh um, working and they are taking people, but I I have no idea of what schedule or who they are taking. I only are, am aware of our scheduling. Mm -hmm. But yes, the uh, the Kenjin uh, the Arab uh, colonies are fine and still intact. Right. Okay. And if are all of my infusions done, completed? Yes, yours are all done. Okay, thank you. I'll pass the mic. Christine. Very well. Greetings, Tikar. Greetings. Um, I was wondering if um, I've received the Yael um, DNA infusion. 
Yes, you have. Do you notice that um, you have a greater clarity of thought? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do. Um, well, and also in your work, you have a greater connection with the animals. This is always increasing, but with the Yu-Yil, it will increase. Um, you will see it even more. So um, I think that there are a, a couple particular animals that you do feel the increase with. Yes, that's very true. Um, do I need any other infusions to help me along or um, in my... Um... Not at this time. Let's see how this one continues to work. I would like to see the clarity of mind become more apparent. Okay. And um, can you send me some healing to my hands because my arthritis is creeping along? Very well. There will be an infusion tonight. You had also mentioned once about getting a galactic um, language download. Would that help me with learning 3D languages? Not really, but it would help you with communicating with any beings that come on first contact. Okay. Much love. Thank but you very much, Tucker. I love your birds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, hello. Well, we can't hear you. There is silence. Yes, we can't hear you. He wanted to know if he had any hybrid children. He had written the question before, so. Yes, there you do have hybrid children. But um, I, I thought you were aware of them. Perhaps you're not. You have two, a boy and a girl. One is Pleiadian and one is Yuyil. <coughs> Their names are C Cecil, interesting. One is named Cecil, and the other one is Best. Any other questions? Uh, he's not typing at the moment, so I assume... He might be away from the mic. That would satisfy him. Um, if he comes back, I'll let him speak. Um... The car, I haven't felt lately uh, Leonardo. He used to be around me. Is there a reason for that? Who, who do you not feel? Leonardo, my hybrid child. Oh. Well, he is being trained, and so he's not around quite as often, but still, you should feel him because he is around. Perhaps he's just a little more subtle energy, or perhaps you're a little more distracted. But I will let him know to uh, give you a greater uh, realization of his uh, presence. Yes, because yes. he, he was before, but lately I have not felt him, so I was wondering what had happened. I know Very well. he was a bit distracted, so I had to tell him to pay a little more attention. Um, but I'm it seems... It. He, is, um, he is learning his lessons very well, but yes, he is easily distracted because he has many different things that he is interested in. Such as? Well, he is uh, creative. He likes architecture. He is very intrigued with uh, human architecture and Pleiadian architecture. Also, he likes some forms of math. He is also into uh, engineering with uh, math applications. and. Uh, of fixing different kinds of technology. Okay. Um, Tukur, is there a way you could tell me how much of, what percentage of human DNA does he have? Yes, one moment, please. Twenty-one point one. 21.1% human DNA. And the rest of it is Lyran? Yes. Okay. All right. I think 
Will is back. Very well. Thank you, Tucker. You are welcome. Will, we still don't hear you. So, uh, Dan has one last question. Yeah. And then we will let you go from there. Yeah, yeah. Tucker, I just wanted to request um, a scan and an infusion for Alex. Uh, she's been having a time of it here, and I could use your assistance with her if you are able. Very well. We will speak later. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. They are calling me away, so I must go. Yes. Thank you for coming to Kerr. It has been a pleasure. I am glad that I was able to answer so many questions. Have a wonderful day. Namaste. Namaste. You too. Look at you. Hello. Hey, how are you? Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. Hi. Hi, Jim. Welcome Hi. back. Thank Welcome you. Welcome back, Jim. Jim, do you need a drink? Yes, I do. Yes. Mm. There you go. Nice drink. All righty. So. All right. Who's going we, to do some closing blessings? <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Alrighty. I will do one. Um, I will say it in English this time. All right. Very good. Today... I wish for all of us to have acceptance in our heart, not only of ourselves, but of our surroundings, that whatever comes to our life, we are able to see how it's serving us, and that if we're not able to see it, to ask for clarity at that moment, and to us for peace to come into our hearts, to, for love to come into our hearts, and to have the strength to overcome whatever's happening at that moment, and to love ourselves regardless of what's happening, to accept ourselves as we are at that moment, regardless of how we're feeling at that moment and to be in joy and peace and harmony with ourselves and with the world at that moment. Namaste. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Alrighty. It was, it's been a good day. Was it a good session oh. today? Oh, yes. We were like poof, 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 questions, questions, questions. <laughs> oh, I, I had wanted to do a blessing, too. So. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> we always have room for more blessings. Yeah. The Nagas. Shaka. Oh, the Nagas. Yasha.
we have felt the spirit of Abraham in our world as well and are thankful for his presence throughout the galaxy. He is a wise and wonderful spirit, and we are doing our best to live by many of his teachings. Today, we just look upon you and love you and connect with you in the sense of, of community and love, one spirit, one thought process, and one sense of communion that will last for ages to come. Namaste. 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 All right. All right. Thank you, Anybody everyone. Else? Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Thank All you, right. everyone. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Please do visit right. Human Colonies. Please make a donation if you have benefit from this in any way, shape, or form. Uh, we wish you the best for the weeks to come. We have a few announcements. Oh. I will be traveling next week, so I won't be here next week, just to let you know. Yeah, Jim okay. will be gone next week. Uh, we'll have somebody else come in. Um, will has an announcement if his microphone is finally working. Will, can you? Oh, good. We, we shall try. Yep, it's working. Yay. Apparently, I wasn't supposed to talk about that topic with the Kerr just yet. Okay. So, uh, I would like to announce a uh, human colony gathering in Hot Springs for the summer solstice Sunday, June 19th through Wednesday, June 22nd. We're going to be doing meditation, Reiki, healings, past life regressions, channelings, galactic languages, special summer solstice activity, many, 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 many other things. Sarah is going to be there. Dan's going to be there. Roxy has shown extreme interest. D Jim has shown extreme interest. Yeah, we're gonna get we're gonna get a house and uh, do some awesomeness. Everyone is welcome. The uh, post will be up on Facebook today, and I'll put it up on my Hot Springs Arkansas. You got it, and my uh, it'll be on my website so people can start making deposits so that we can uh, actually get that house. It's going to be awesome. Come. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you, Will. Um, and everything else just left my brain, I guess. Um, keep a lookout for other announcements on the Google Plus and Human Colonies and Human Colony Ning and Human Colony Facebook and Human Colony yeah. everywhere. Thank and you. And Kirk McNair and everyone. Yeah. And all of that. Thank you, everybody.